the 2017 Kia Optima SX Turbo. When you look at this car inside and out, it's really hard to believe that this is a mid-size sedan coming from Kia. But yet, in my opinion, this is one of the best looking cars in its segment on this on sale today. I'm Jay and welcome to this latest episode of Carbus Unboxing Reviews and this is of course the latest Kia Optima. Now before I get started, I want to thank Kia Marin for letting Carbus come on down and film this car for you today. So the Kia Optima, for those of you who don't know, it first launched in 2000 and honestly it really didn't look like much. It's always been classified as a mid-size sedan. The second generation that came out in 2005, it was also bland looking, but that was the old Kia. What Kia did in just a few years after that is they hired a guy named Peter Schreier. He used to work for Volkswagen and one of his projects included the first generation Audi TT. He became Hyundai and Kia's design chief and when the third generation Optima came out in 2010, it was a huge break from the old Optimas that we saw, it was stunning looking, and this latest fourth generation, which just came out for 2016, continues that tradition. So let's start up the engine here, because I want you to hear this. Okay, now what you just heard, that was the 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder. It's got a total of 245 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. It's paired to a 6-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters. This is actually the top-of-the-line engine you can get in the Optima today because this is, of course, the SX trim. It's not the highest trim that you can get, but it's the second to the highest. The base trim is the LX, and then you have the LX 1.6T EX, then you have this SX, followed by the SX Limited. But if you want the most powerful engine with the most sort of driving dynamic capability, go for the turbo right here. Because the base engine, well, it's just a 2.4 inline 4 with 185 horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque. I don't think that is powerful enough considering this car weighs, well, well over 3,000 pounds. But what's kind of interesting is the mid-range 1.6 liter turbocharged inline 4. That's got 178 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque, so more torque but less horsepower. However, that 1.6 turbo, it's paired to a 7-speed dual clutch, and I'm kind of wondering why Kia did not offer that 7-speed dual clutch with this 2-liter turbo 4, because the 6-speed automatic is nice, but I really want that 7-speed dual clutch in this car. It would just make it an even better car, and for that matter, why don't they just make a 6-speed manual as an option? If Kia really wants to make this car drive as sporty as it looks inside and out, and as you can see, this exterior, they call it Snow White Pearl, meaning it's white. Uh, it's got 18-inch alloy wheels, dual exhaust with chrome tips, sport LED rear taillights, LED signature lights. It's just a really good-looking car. You can tell that this was designed by a German guy because it's just got these sharp lines, kind of angular at times, but it's just aggressive and sporty. And here's that engine, the 2-liter turbo 4. Great engine, it's just paired to the wrong transmission. Performance, 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.8 seconds. Top speed is electronically limited to 153 miles per hour. Fuel economy, it's actually pretty good. Uh, 22 miles per gallon in the city, 32 on the highway, and a combined 25. Again, this car weighs just under 3,600 pounds, so you got to remember, and it, uh, it's also not a hybrid, and fuel economy could be better. And if you're really looking for a mid-size sedan with the best fuel economy, you have the Chevrolet Malibu Hybrid. I did an unboxing review of that. I encourage you to check that out, too. This interior, again, I'm really impressed with it. If I didn't see that Kia badge on the steering wheel, I might, just might, even mistake this for, let's say, an Audi. And... Yeah, it deserves that recognition. I like the black with that uh, red trim stitching there. This is all leather. And the quality here. Again, I have to really applaud the South Korean brands, Hyundai and Kia. They are sister companies that they basically took a page out of the Japanese automaker playbook. 
in that the Japanese were like, look, at, we're going to build cars with just superior build quality as opposed to the American cars. This was several, several years ago by now. And we're going to win over customers that way. And the South Koreans have done exactly that. And the rear seats, you know, it's, it's a nice place to be. It is a fairly roomy rear seat, 60-40 split folding rear seats. But again, remember, mid-size sedan, this is not supposed to be a luxury sedan, even though, it, in my opinion, it looks like it inside and out. This is just a family sedan. Competes, like I said, Chevrolet Malibu, Ford Fusion. I'll get to other competitors shortly as well. So that's the class segment we're talking about here. But look at this dashboard. It's just, some have said it's kind of simple and plain or boring. Others have said it's really elegant and luxury-like. So I'm going to go with the latter. I think it's elegant and luxury-like. Again, I am seeing a lot of Audi influence here, and that's no coincidence. Yeah, look at that. That is a nice looking dash. It's not offensive or any way, it's sort of like that. It, it does the job, but it just, it gives a nice premium feel. And like I mentioned, the build quality materials are really solid. But again, when I look at that gear shift lever and it's that six speed automatic, ah man, I just wish it had a seven speed dual clutch or a six speed manual it would just make this car so much more fun to drive than it already is. It's okay to drive right now, but it could be even better. And I really just don't know why Kia isn't offering the seven speed dual clutch here. Another thing I don't like, and this might be the one complaint I have about the interior, is the paddle shifters. You can see them uh, kind of on either the side of the steering column there. Uh, they're kind of small and they're plastic. Uh, I think they should be metal. Because what else is metal is all the door handles and all the trim pieces along there. That's all real metal. Oh, same with the dash. And I just don't know why they didn't do that for the paddle shifters. Here you have the 8-inch touchscreen. And what's interesting is that the whole dash is kind of slightly angled towards the driver. Which is good for the driver, but for the front seat passenger, it could be a little annoying to reach over. This, of course, it has Sirius XM radio, Bluetooth... And I think the infotainment system here, it's, it's very nice. It, the screen might be, especially with the nav, a little small. But again, it's not a deal breaker. And remember, this car is brand new, so it won't be a couple more years until it gets a midlife refresh. And my guess is at that time, Kia is going to improve its infotainment system even more and possibly add a larger screen. You also have dual zone climate control. Again, you have an interior with packed with these features and the design that in some ways it, it, it even makes $50,000 cars kind of look, well, it puts them to shame a little bit. It just shows what can be done and you have to wonder is paying these premium prices for cars these days really worth it? And this Kia Optima SX Turbo here is proof. Now this car, it's also equipped with the SXT technology package, and that added that uh, dual zone climate control you saw, uh, hit headlights with high beam assist, a panoramic sunroof, you'll see that shortly, Harman Kardon premium surround sound system, power front driver's seat with lumbar support, heated and ventilated front seats, and heated rear seat cushions as well. Again, you, just a lot of features for the money. And then when it comes to safety, that technology package adds a blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert, rear parking assist, lane departure warning, autonomous emergency braking, advanced smart cruise control, and LED overhead interior lighting. Yep, there's that panoramic sunroof. I love having these things in cars. Again, Kia has been really good about that, for an example. A $27,000 Kia Soul has a panoramic sunroof as opposed to an $80,000 Toyota Land Cruiser that, well, doesn't. Other standard safety features you'll get are dual front airbags, driver's knee airbag, front seated mounted side airbags, full length side curtain airbags, ABS brakes, traction and stability control, hill start assist, and the tire pressure monitoring system. So how does this Kia Optima SX Turbo drive? Well, 
Compared to the previous third generation, Kia stiffened the chassis and they retuned the suspension, and the stiffening was done by adding more high strength steel and adhesives. But I will say, this car, it's not as much fun to drive as the Ford Fusion. I recently did a review of that as well, and I have to give Ford credit, they have really made the Ford Fusion drive almost like a four-door sports sedan. But there is hope for Kia in the future, because its sister company, Hyundai, hired away the former BMW chief engine, uh, BMW M rather, chief engineer to head its new N performance division. And if that guy in his skills translate down from Hyundai to Kia, then I see a high performance sportier version of this Kia Optima coming up in just a couple of years. And this car totally deserves the performance treatment, especially the suspension and tuning, because look at it. This is a great looking car. I even like it better than the Ford Fusion and the Chevrolet Malibu. And speaking of competition, what else is there? There's also the Hyundai Sonata, which is actually the corporate twin of this car. It's got more conservative styling, not quite as sporty inside and out. There's also the Mazda 6, which is a great looking and driver's car. Chevrolet Malibu, I mentioned, Honda Accord, Toyota Camry, Nissan Altima, Volkswagen Passat, Chrysler 200, and the Subaru Legacy. The difference with the Legacy is that unlike all those, it comes standard with all-wheel drive. This Kia Optima only is offered in front-wheel drive. Now, all those sedans I mentioned, they all start off in the low $20,000 range, let's say around $22,000, $23,000, and they top off well into the mid $30,000 range. So how much does this Kia Optima cost? Well, just to get this out of the way, and again, this is to full Kia's credit here, is that they didn't raise the price of this new model from the previous third generation. Fantastic. So a base LX will come in at $22,140. The SX Limited, which is the car you see here, or the top of the line rather, starts off at $36,040, and the SX Turbo base price is $29,790. Now, once you add in the SXT technology package and a handling fee, this car right here has a grand total of $35,770. And that's actually a fantastic value. Because bear in mind, the average new car, brand new car, not used in the US, sells for $33,000 right now, which is kind of high, yes. But the fact that you're getting all of these features in a Kia Optima for just under $36,000 and you're seeing very similar features in cars that cost well into the $50,000 range is just fantastic. And more automakers need to be paying attention to Kia for that very reason. And the, the rear trunk here, again, it's plenty roomy. Is it the biggest in the class? No, but it doesn't need to be. Because remember, this is, it's a family sedan, midsize, it's not a large one. And I don't think customers are always going to measure by, you know, cubic feet that precisely in com uh, comparing models here. So the only thing that, in my opinion, this Kia Optima SX Turbo does not do well, it's, well, for starters, it's a little slow to accelerate. I don't like those plastic shift paddles. And again, why does it not offer a dual clutch or even a manual transmission? And what do I like? Well, geez, look at it. It's just a great exterior design and it drives nicely and it's very quiet inside. When I first saw this, I thought this was literally a $45,000 car. It's not, it costs 10 grand less. You got these nice 18 inch alloy wheels. It's, again, Kia is proving that it can pack a lot of value in an affordable midsize sedan and you can make it your all your neighbors look like you're driving something much more premium and expensive than you really are but if you're looking for an outright sports sedan two other recommendations the mazda 6 and like i mentioned the ford fusion those are about the sportiest you can get to 
mid-size family sedans today, but there is a lot of uh, hope for the Kia Optima in the future. So I'm out of time for today. Thanks for watching everyone. Any more questions for me, leave them in the comment section. Any suggestions for future reviews, also leave those in the comment section. And don't forget to sub uh, subscribe to the Carbuzz Unboxing YouTube channel. So until my next video, I'll see you all next time.